until it's finally been done in an international race of champions. Welcome to the World Center of Racing, Daytona International Speedway, where today, 12 of the world's greatest race drivers will compete for 100 miles on this massive two and a half mile high banked oval. Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Punch. We're so glad you could join us for this, the 24th year of IROC. The concept for the International Race of Champions is quite simple. We take 12 championship caliber drivers invited from other series, put them in identically prepared, identically tuned Pontiac Firebirds. And now with all the cars the same, the only determinant as to who goes to victory lane is an individual driver's skill and degree of daring. Today's starting lineup was determined by a blind draw. And take a look, who will lead the charge down to the green flag, seven-time Winston Cup champion Dale Earnhardt. Five of Dale Earnhardt's 10 career IROC Series wins have come here at Daytona, including last year's last lap spectacular heroics in this very race. Here they come off the corner. Earnhardt goes to the inside. The line is formed behind him. He's got the push. Here it is. Dale Earnhardt wins it. Wow, the classic intimidator move just a few hundred feet from the finish line. What a great year for Dale Earnhardt and IROC last year. He won three of the four races and won the championship by just one single point. Now we enter IROC 24. This will be the 93rd race overall and the 20th here at Daytona. Now, because of scheduling conflicts, there will be drivers from three divisions represented, eight from the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, one from the NASCAR Bush Series, and three from the Northern Light Indy Racing League. Let's find out how they'll line up for this first race of the new millennium. In the front row from NASCAR Winston Cup, Dale Earnhardt and Tony Stewart. Earnhardt is the defending IROC and race winner here at Daytona. Stewart is in his second IROC series. Row number two from the NASCAR Bush Series, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and from the Northern Light Indy Racing League, Eddie Cheever. Earnhardt is in his second IROC series. Cheever won the 1998 Indy 500. Row three from NASCAR Winston Cup, Bobby Labonte and Jeff Gordon. Labonte finished second here last year in IROC. Gordon is in his sixth straight International Race of Champions series. Row four, two from the Northern Light Indy Racing League, Greg Ray and Mark Dismore. Ray is the defending IRL champion and Dismore is in his rookie IROC season. Row five from Winston Cup, Mark Martin and Dale Jarrett. Martin is a four-time IROC champion. Jarrett won the 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup. And in row six from Winston Cup, Jeff Burton and Rusty Wallace. Burton was second in the 1998 IROC race here at Daytona. Rusty is in his ninth IROC season. He was champ in 91. Working with me in the booth today, representing four NASCAR Winston Cup titles, Benny Parsons and the newest member of our ABC ESPN team, Ray Everham. Bob mentioned just three drivers from the IRL, nine basically drivers from the NASCAR, Winston Cup, and the Bushers. Ray, do these guys from IRL have a chance? Well, Benny, they've got a better chance than they would if the NASCAR guys could set the cars up the way they want them, but they couldn't. Jay Signori and his guys set them up so that they all drive the same. And, you know, there was a time when the open wheel guys actually had a handle on Daytona Speedway. Guess who the first guy, the first stock car driver to win a race was here in 1976? Who's that? A guy named Benny Parsons, and he beat Mario Andretti and A.J. Foyt. Well, the engines have been fired, and 12 drivers get set to go. 40 laps, 100 miles at the World Center of Racing as the opener for IROC 24 is about to go from Daytona International Speedway. In the racing business, the right hardware at the right time can make the difference between winning and losing. With quality master mechanic tools, you're always a winner. Choose from a wide assortment of professional quality tools at great prices. Expect the best with master mechanic. Your true value is the official hardware store of NASCAR, IROC, and homes everywhere. Whatever life throws your way, you've got to be ready. Hey, no 
sweat. You've got new Speed Stick Clear Stick, a whole new kind of clear antiperspirant. Clear Stick goes on dry to keep you dry, clear through a guy's day. Gels go on wet, but new Clear Stick goes on clear and dry. And dry, clearly, is the whole idea. New Speed Stick Clear Stick goes on dry, keeps you dry. True Value IROC Series about to go for the year 2000 and half the field have in-car cameras. Starting seventh spot, Greg Gray has an onboard camera. Outside of the third row, Jeff Gordon also has an onboard camera. Starting outside the second row, Eddie Cheever, an onboard camera. Dale Earnhardt Jr. starting third. Tony Stewart outside pole sitter. And on the pole, last year's champion, Dale Earnhardt, with an onboard camera as he drives into the sun off turn four. Set to go, 40 laps, 100 miles, $760,000 in purse money, and the race record held by Earnhardt set in 96 at 187.793. The pace car pulls off, and here we go. Set to begin the new millennium with the True Value International Race of Champions. Earnhardt gets a good jump on Tony Stewart, who started alongside him. The inside row now has Dale Earnhardt and his son, Dale Earnhardt Jr., nose to tail down in turn one. Cinch up those seatbelts, folks. This could get exciting. with Earnhardt now out ahead and everybody else two by two behind him. That inside line trying to draft up and now Stewart on the outside line gets a slight advantage going into three, but basically they're just the way they were when they took the green flag through the east end of the banking. And Junior literally pushed his dad to the middle of three and four. It will be Earnhardt, Earnhardt, and Labonte, the first three across the line at the end of lap number one in the first lap at 162.643 for Dale Earnhardt. The colors of the cars are in the upper left as you see how they run. Terry Labonte gets a great jump coming off two, drives up on the outside of Earnhardt Jr. and a little bump from Greg Ray. Oh, and now they're three wide at the end of the back stretch. Oh, and they're still three wide in the 12th car, Rusty Wallace, right in the middle. And I said Terry Labonte, obviously that's Bobby Labonte. And Earnhardt is going to lead the second lap, but Bobby Labonte was in the lead as they came off the corner, but he drops back. And now a challenge from Dale Earnhardt Jr. And he takes the lead. And being forced way up high is Labonte. One of your open wheel drivers, Benny, up at the second, Greg Ray. Greg Ray has expressed some concern about this race. He simply has not had, of course, the drafting experience that these NASCAR Winston Cup drivers do. But he's doing okay, Ray. 100 miles here at Daytona, he's about to get it. <laughs> Ray, you worked on these IROC cars for many, many years. Just how do they get them as close as they are? Lots of hard work, Benny, and it's something that, that Jay Signori and his guys has, have evolved. They keep records upon records. They build their own motors and match the horsepower. They build their own bodies and have special chase for putting them together. Those cars are identically prepared as you could possibly get them. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads. Greg Ray getting the challenge. As a matter of fact, he's moved back to fifth spot. He was second when he crossed the line. He's up on the high side of the racetrack and trying to get some drafting help from his fellow Northern Light Indy Racing League driver, Eddie Cheever, who's in that yellow car. But down the back stretch, here comes Tony Stewart showing some muscle again as Labonte now gets shuffled back. He's in the middle of the racetrack. Up on the high side is Rusty Wallace, who started back in the 12th position. That's the dark blue car. And at the line, it's Tony Stewart. Mark Martin has moved up to second spot. 
Mark Martin is so good at driving these IROC cars, and I really believe that that is because he's so good at driving a Bush Grand National car. These IROC cars are a lot like a Bush Grand National. It's not surprising to see Dale Earnhardt Jr. out front like that. Meaning they have about the same horsepower as a National Bush Series car. About the same horsepower, same wheelbase. They're just a little bit smaller than a Winston Cup car, a little bit less horsepower. That cream-colored car is being driven by Jeff Burton. He works his way up to fourth position in the battle with Greg Ray up on the high side of the racetrack. Now, once again, here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. to the bottom side of the racetrack, down through the tri-oval. And once again, at the line, it is Dale Earnhardt Jr., but Tony Stewart now takes the lead, and here comes Jeff Burton as Earnhardt Jr. is the meat and the sandwich into one. They were literally four wide there one time off of the trial and they're still three wide. Folks, this doesn't fit too good. They're gonna try to go four wide down the back stretch. And Jeff Gordon had two wheels below the yellow line down there in one and two. Gordon has dropped all the way back to the back of the field. Meanwhile, it's Jeff Burton leading. And the lime green colored car running in second position is Dale Jarrett come up from his 10th starting position. Third is Mark Dismore from the Northern Light Indy Racing League. How about that run by Dismore? Mark Dismore finished third in the IRL points last year, won his first Northern Light Indy Racing League event at Texas Motor Speedway to close the season last year. That's a battle back for about the fifth or sixth spot. So leading here at the end of six laps, they will run 40 in the International Race of Champions. Jeff Burton is your leader, followed by Dale Jarrett, Mark Dismore, Bobby Labonte, and Eddie Cheever. We'll be right back. you want to be, the things you want to do, but you're not going to get there until you finish this stuff. That's why there's true value. We get you in and out fast with just what you need for the job, because the sooner you get done, the sooner you can get back to this thing called your life. True value. Help is just around the corner. Everyone here is a race fan, and real fans know racing. They also know authentic racing apparel. Chase Authentics is the authentic trackside apparel of NASCAR. Authentic t-shirts, caps, cotton and denim shirts, golf shirts, and jackets. Authentic racing apparel you'll find on hot drivers. In leading department stores, NASCAR specialty shops, and trackside. Chase Authentics. Americans love power. And they love their high-performance Briggs & Stratton engines. That's why just about every neighborhood in America is a Briggs & Stratton neighborhood. Briggs & Stratton. The power that works for you. Back up front, meanwhile, Burton continues to show the way. That second group has drafted up. And they're in single file formation through turn number one now. We have a couple of stock car guys at the front of the field and then a couple of IndyCar racers. Mark Dismore running third, followed by Eddie Cheever Jr. Jerry? 
Bob, this is Eddie Cheever's second ever IROC Series event. Now, he finished 11th at Daytona and 8th at Talladega last year. I asked him what he learned from a year ago. He said, I learned a very valuable lesson. Last year, I drove my car toward every single opening. This year, I've learned by watching the tapes, I need to stay in line and not get excited when someone goes by me. Stay in line, be patient, stay in the draft, and I will gradually work my way toward the front as opposed to working my way toward the back as I did a year ago. Mark Dismore just got shuffled back a few positions. We're on board there momentarily with Eddie Cheever. Now he goes to the inside. He goes from the high line to the low line and gets in behind Dale Jarrett. We need those guys to keep mixing it up so Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon can catch back up. Here comes Martin Martin. I thought he was out of the draft a moment ago, but here he is battling for about the fifth position. That's the blue car on the bottom. On board with Greg Ray right behind Mark. Mark Dismore went from third to uh, almost the back of the field. But that's what happens in the draft. And again, Dismore is uh, not all that experienced in the drafting game. Up front, Dale Jarrett will lead this lap. Eddie Cheever Jr. running second. Then comes Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Burton side by side back there for fourth. When you say side by side, that's, you're exactly right. Just like they're lined up to run a 55 mile per hour pace lap. And doing, they're doing this at about 180 miles per hour. Last lap, 182. It might explain that Dale Earnhardt Jr. is officially a representative of the NASCAR Bush Series Grand National Division. Of course, he is a candidate for Raybestos Rookie of the Year honors in the NASCAR Winston Cup Division in the year 2000. Look how close they are coming off the floor. And it looks to me like Earnhardt Jr. is really getting a lot of, oh, he's down on the apron of the oh, racetrack. Sheever takes him way down low. <laughs> wow. Then you see that rubber strip that's on the front of the car? That's a very, very soft rubber that Jay Signori runs on the front of these things. The noses on these IROC cars are so low, they actually scrape the racetrack. Pontiac Firebirds in action here in IROC 24. Daytona International Speedway, the opening event of the season at the moment. With 13 laps completed, Dale Jarrett leads, and we'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. In the racing business, the right hardware at the right time can make the difference between winning and losing. With quality master mechanic tools, you're always a winner. Choose from a wide assortment of professional quality tools at great prices. Expect the best with Master Mechanic. Your true value is the official hardware store of NASCAR, IROC, and Homes Everywhere. If you think all ATVs are created equal, you've never ridden a Yamaha. The new Kodiak 400 Automatic and Big Bear 400 from Yamaha. Because out here, bears rule. Now, get low payments on every Yamaha ATV, starting at just $69 a month during Yamaha All-Terrain Value Days. Great. ESPN The Magazine. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Dan, can I put you on hold? Dan Patrick wants a free Polo Fleece pullover. He writes a column for the magazine. Yeah. But he's not a new subscriber. Sorry, Dan. No can do on the fleece. It's only for new subscribers. You mean you're, you're actually calling to subscribe? Everyone wants our warm, roomy Polar Fleece pullover. It has a half-zip front and embroidered ESP and the magazine logo. And best of all, it's free. Stuart Scott wants the fleece. Booyah! Call now for ESP and the magazine and get your sports the way it ought to be. Big and bold, fast and furious. Get 26 issues, a year's worth for just a dollar an issue. 66% off the newsstand price. And your fleece pullover is free. It's Chris Berman. He could go all the way! Bumbling something from the blue. Call now. 1-800-814-1771. Tonight, Kathy Lee Gifford, Maggie Lawson, and InSync's Justin Timberlake together in a world premiere movie. Model Behavior, tonight at 7, 6 central on the wonderful world of Disney. The Rookies, the Heroes, 
The legends in the making. The future of hockey is here. Saturday, it's Rangers Flyers, Red Wings Avalanche, or Penguins Bruins, the NHL on ABC. Check it out. Saturday at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. True value, IROC 24 underway. Just moments ago, less than half a lap ago, that lime green car there on the inside driven by Dale Jarrett was at the front of the field. He's gotten shuffled back just a little. And Dale Earnhardt finds himself up front once again, being pursued by his son. Moving around in all that traffic at 180 miles an hour. Unlike the Winston Cup cars, these guys have no spotters. They've got a little side mirror on the left side of the car, and that's it. I think Dale Earnhardt Jr. is really getting the kick out of intimidating his dad. Pulling up right on his back bumper. Really bump drafting. Pumping him down the straightaways. You know, a couple weeks ago, he got the opportunity to drive his father's car, and he said what a thrill it was. Imagine what a would thrill it would be if he beat his dad here today. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr., this is his second IROC season. He was involved in a crash here on lap eight. At Daytona last year, started fourth, ended up in 10th position, and will never forget the closest finish in IROC history that occurred last year at Michigan when father beat Dale Jr. by seven one thousandths of a second. Here they are battling wheel to wheel once again, although Jeff Burton now slides up into the second position, and Earnhardt suddenly goes back to a battle for fifth. And he's in the middle of the three wide. He gets out of that pretty quickly down to the inside, but it's still too wide as Dale Earnhardt Jr. has the lead. And as you can see, those guys mixed it up enough to, that allowed Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon to catch the tail end of that pack. Jeff Gordon took it easy for the first 16 laps, but now may be ready to show some muscle. Down on this inside line, we have Dale Jarrett. And he and Earnhardt are Door handle to door handle. That's Greg Ray on the inside. Eddie Cheever up on top. Mark Dismore is in the white car. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will get credit for leading another lap. And his speed that lap was 181.218. It's Jeff Burton, Tony Stewart, second and third. And here comes Dale Sr. Look at him blow by <laughs> on the outside of Tony Stewart. Dale Sr., when he runs up top like that, sometimes uses that banking to create momentum. He actually runs the car up oh. the banking and then down, picks up speed. Man, that was a big-time <laughs> bump grab. Man, I'm telling you. Cheever just gave Earnhardt a bit of a bump. Stewart down on the inside of Cheever, and Eddie decides to try to get down to the inside, but cannot. Meanwhile, a battle for the lead as they come down. Burton with the challenge once again in the cream-colored car. And some good drafting help from Dale Earnhardt may push Burton to the front. Folks, these drivers are just fantastic. And normally, Benny, by this time, we see one, sometimes two drivers out of the draft. But, Ray, not the case this year. Everybody's sticking right together. They've done a great job. Uh, all the test drivers, Dick Trickle, Dave Marcus, Jim Soto, they've worked hard getting those cars identical. And the IROP cars also do not have restrictor plates on them. And they are trimmed out much uh, in a very, very big downforce mode. So they blow a big hole in the air, create a big wake, make it easy to draft behind. Three wide through the tri-oval. Eddie Cheever is in the middle. Now Cheever go back home and look at this tape and say, how did I get in this situation? <laughs> So it's Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading over Tony Stewart, Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett, Greg Ray, and Dale Earnhardt. Those are the top six after 19 of 40 laps. Imagine a place that understands you'd rather be doing anything on Saturday other than fixing your faucet. A place that knows you can't spend half the weekend shopping for your weekend projects. True value. For the jobs you do most and look forward to least. Because the sooner you get done, the sooner you can get back to this thing called your life. True value.
Health is just around the corner. ABC Tonight. An all-new practice. I came for you. Bobby is taken hostage. I don't know if I can handle this. You won't believe who the kidnapper is. What are you talking about? You won't believe what he wants. I'm going. Not a chance. It's judgment day. Now you're on trial. Bobby. An all-new practice. ABC Tonight, 10, 9 Central. Defending champion Scott Goodyear faces old rival Al Unser Jr. at the Phoenix Indy 200. Next Sunday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ABC. If a picture is worth a thousand words, imagine what we bring you every day. Capturing Colorado, one picture at a time. Seven News, the reason to watch. Fans, experience the thrill at Bobby Allison's Winter Circle Race Team Store. The best in die-cast NASCAR, Winston Cup, Bush, Kart, Sprints, Midgets, and even the World of Outlaws race cars. A vast selection of officially licensed jackets, t-shirts, polo shirts, mirror display cases, hats, and the best in racing paraphernalia. Located in Westminster Mall near Foley's and at Southwest Plaza Mall. Call toll-free 1-877-427-2828 or check us out on the web at winnersplace.com. See you at Bobby Allison's Winter Circle. Any success I've known is a result of the things I learned as a Navy SEAL. Those principles are still alive in today's Naval Reserve. The Naval Reserve is a great place to begin and continue life's journey. It's the Navy, but part-time. Right now, the Naval Reserve is looking for bright people who want to make a difference. If you've been on active duty, that's a plus. Call this number and see if you qualify. Look at me. You never know where a journey in the Navy could lead. March 17, John and Patsy Ramsey, Barbara Walters, no restrictions, no lawyers, all questions answered, 2020, March 17. Today's auto race brought to you by Fantastic Sam's. Gotta be the hair. I'm Sean McLaughlin. Don't miss 7 News at 5 today. Lap number 23. Dale Jarrett now has the lead. Ray is in second. Well, he was in second. <laughs> Jeff Burton goes to second position, forcing Greg Ray up high, and Dale Earnhardt will sneak by on the inside and bring with him Tony Stewart and others. But Greg Ray squeezed off the throttle just a little bit, and look at the momentum that he loses. He's losing position after position as we got a battle for the lead. Here comes Jeff Burton on the outside and just blows by Jared Earnhardt along, and Tony Stewart going with them. See what Dale Earnhardt will do there in that powder blue car running in second position. He follows Jeff Burton off the corner. And this is looking back from Earnhardt's perspective to Tony Stewart, who started second. Now Stewart looks to the inside. What a great view that was of the slingshot, Benny. You can see the car getting closer and closer, got the momentum, pulls out, and tries to make the pass. He's going to need a little help. Oh, now Rusty's coming up behind uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr., and that should make him go a little bit faster. So Jeff Burton out front now, and he sees behind him two by two. He's trying to break the draft by going real low on the backstretch. So Jeff Burton is the leader at the moment. Dale Earnhardt running in second, then Stewart, Martin, Ray, and Earnhardt Jr. Associates Fred Johnson and Jonathan Siegel. And the technical manager of today's game, Rick Godwin. Technical director Scott Sickler, Pat McGrath on staffs. Jim, let me, McGrath. Jim, let me ask you a question. What if Ohio State were in the position right now that Michigan State's in, having a chance to win the Big Ten Championship? Would they have been a number one? Uh, you know, they could have been. Could have been two. I want to use. Can they made it to this point? So you think that they go from uh, 
One to a two. Game. Absolutely. Losing in the first round. I think they'll be the two in the West. That's my guess. So what you're saying is if Ohio State had come through these three days, here is a race fan. And real fan. They won the championship. Yeah. They definitely would have been a one. They would have been the one. I think they may have. Michigan State would have gone to a, a two. I think they both could have possibly been one. Wow. I think it was very possible. You're talking about teams, Billy, that were ranked four or five in the country coming into the week. Authentic racing apparel you'll find on Hot Drivers. In leading department stores, NASCAR specialty shops, and trackside. Chase Authentic. What scenario? The Cincinnati scenario. I'm at, I'm at an eight. No, wait a minute. You asked me had Ohio State hypothesizing here made it to Sunday. They didn't. Had they? Yeah, it could have been different. William. Teach. The NHL is on ABC. Regional coverage of regular season action begins on Saturday at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. Check your local listings in the, for the game in your area. ABC Sports, the home of the Stanley Cup. 25 laps have been completed in the first True Value IROC race of the year 2000. I'm Bob Jenkins along with Benny Parsons, Ray Evernham, and Dr. Jerry Punch reporting from Pitt Road and eventually Victory Lane. Jeff Burton is the leader. Dale Earnhardt running in second. Tony Stewart is third. And we've got three cars that have lost the draft. Only nine cars in this lead draft. Jeff Gordon, Eddie Cheever, and Mark Dismore. You ever see the nine cars? There comes Gordon and Cheever and Dismore behind them. They're going to have a tough time catching up if those guys stay lined up too, Benny. And so the lone open wheel driver in the lead pack is Greg Ray, and he finds himself in sixth position. Here is the lead pack. Jeff Burton in the cream-colored car showing the way. And right now it's single file formation off corner number two down the back stretch. Tony Stewart trying to get Whoa. in. Erno goes bound, tries to get on the outside. He has some drafting help. I think that's Rusty Wallace that pulls up with him, and Earnhardt goes to the lead. Rusty Wallace won the IROC race here in 1989. He was also involved in that lap eight crash at Daytona here last year. Jerry Punch. Although Dale Earnhardt is leading, they flash by this time. That is not where he would like to be. He told his crew that typically he would like to be running second and go for the lead within the last two laps. Remember a year ago, he won three of the four IROC events, making a pass in the last lap and a half. He does not want to lead the last four or five laps. He wants to be running second with a couple to go, but unfortunately there, he was forced to make a move by Burton dropping off the draft. The way these guys are running, he might not have to worry about leading too much longer. No, that's right. Yeah, if he doesn't want to lead, he's certainly got some guys back there who will be more than glad to take it away from him. is for fourth position that's Tony Stewart in the red car and Mark Martin in the medium blue Dale Earnhardt Jr. who led several laps of this race is right behind Tony Stewart with a unique bird's eye perspective today's race is brought to you by the Bud One Airship and Budweiser the official beer of NASCAR Tony Stewart's bumper cam looking back on Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the green car and the aqua machine up high driven by Greg Ray. And you see the shadow which means there's a car right beside of Tony Stewart. And that's Mark Martin. This is Greg Ray's view. Last lap, almost 181 miles per hour. They do it side by side, hitting the bumps, dancing around. Our scoring information gives us the speed of these top nine cars, and they vary from 180.65 to 180.6. Unbelievable. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the opener for the year 2000 of IROC 24. The finale from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on ABC August the 5th at 4.30 Eastern Time.
Now, Dale Earnhardt's problems have compounded because running in second and third, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, who are teammates with Jack Roush in the NASCAR Winston Cup and work very closely. And I would think working very closely right now would be utmost on their mind to try to get by Dale Earnhardt. And Benny, I think if if uh, they do team up, they might end up splitting them because remember, he can only block one line of cars. The, it's going to be hard for him to hold the lead if those cars get into two lines. Less than four laps to go. Greg Ray's car a little bit jittery there in the third and fourth turns. Seven is in the books. Earnhardt continues to lead. Jeff Burton second, followed by Martin, Ray, Stewart, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And Stewart trying to take the spot from Greg Ray. And Earnhardt Jr. slides up the racetrack. Wow, Greg Ray almost lost that baby as he came off turn two. But meanwhile, that's really helped Mark Martin and Jeff Burton as these cars run side by side. They don't have to worry about being attacked from the rear now. They can attack Earnhardt and not worry about losing position. And Ray is going to get shuffled to the back of this draft, it would appear. It just takes that little. All right, now with just two laps to go, five miles of racing, can Dale Earnhardt start off? 2000 with another win. He won three of four last year. The only race he didn't win was the finale at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway last year, but he did finish good enough to give himself the championship. Now, with the, the momentum of Stewart and Earnhardt Jr., that could do nothing but help Mark. I think Mark's rolling back to those guys a little bit. As they catch him, they should help push Mark ahead. Jeff Burton is making the move to the inside, and he's got help from Mark Martin. Here they come to the line. The white flag is in the air, and Burton leads the next to last lap. Now Tony Stewart has jumped over the outside with Earnhardt and Earnhardt Jr. Five cars. Five cars in the battle to the checkered flag for the win here at Daytona. Earnhardt gets the advantage up high off the second corner. Tony Stewart. Helping Dale Earnhardt up in that high line, and Earnhardt once again takes the lead down the back stretch and into turn three. Tony Stewart and Jeff Burton running second and third. Are they going to be able to catch him? They come off of corner number four. It would appear as if here comes Stewart taking a look to the inside, but no! Dale Earnhardt wins! Opener of the True Value IROC series for 2000 beating Tony Stewart, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And with that win, he ties Al Unser Jr. for most wins in IROC competition 11. You know, I just knew that Earnhardt was toast with coming down for the white flag when Burton and Mark Martin hooked up to go by him. I just, how does he do that? Well, as I said before, a lot of people say he can see air, and I believe he can, but one of the big factors there was the fact that Tony Stewart jumped on the outside line. That helped push Earnhardt on, on past. Well, Dale Earnhardt won his first IROC race at Talladega back in May of 1990, and he has opened the new millennium 2000 with another victory, beating Stewart, Burton, Martin, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Rusty Wallace, Bobby Labonte, Dale Jarrett, and... I bequeath my Pizza Hut empire to... Dale Earnhardt, the seven-time NASCAR Winston Cup champion, continues to win in the True Value International Race of Champions, driving to victory at Daytona International Speedway once again and winning his 11th race overall.
This was the 17th IROC race that has been won from the pole. It had not been done since Allenzer Jr. did it at Michigan in 1995 until today, and the champ emerges. <laughs> On the victory lane, here's Jerry Punch. And here's a news flash. Dale Earnhardt in victory lane at Daytona, getting a big hug from wife Teresa. Dale, congratulations. Les Richter going by with that big cup. Dale, congratulations. Your sixth win at Daytona, two years in a row. But this year, you didn't wait to the final lap to lead. Well, I, I, I knew Jeff Burton and Mark Martin were going to try to do something. And he did off of, he did me just like Mark did me, but he did it a lap too soon. And uh, it's Tony Stewart and I, Hooked up, Dale Jr. was buying him. We got to draft him, and we come back by him off of two, and I got by him all, and then just had to race Tony back to the start finish line. It's great. I thought that was going to get me. I thought that was going to do the same thing to me that I did to Mark last year, but play, it was more players that involved this year than there was last year. Now, early on, you and Junior hooked up in a draft, and then uh, the young man didn't respect his elders. He moved to the inside and, and hung you out to dry. Yeah, he did. He, he's, a, he's a racer. He, he wants to go to the front. He wants to stay in front, and I can't blame him a bit for that. I want to thank uh, True Value and DuPont, Goodyear, and uh, everybody that supports these IROC series. It's a good series. Jason Ignore and all the guys do a great job with it, but all the sponsors, I want to thank them, Pontiac and everybody. With this win today, you tie your buddy Al Luncer Jr. for the most wins in IROC with 11 career victories. That's pretty awesome. Uh, you know, if you run in it long enough, you can win a race or two. What do you think, DJ? Where's you at, man? I was pushing you. I know. You back around at Red Cross. Yeah. Thank you. Me and Thank Stuart. You. Yeah, me and Stuart got to run. We we didn't know which way to go. So I said, well, Dad's up there by himself, so I better get up there and help him some. Stuart said, hell, we'll, we'll join in, too. Burton uh, did the same thing to me that I did to Mark off of two, but he did it a lap two. I mean, off of four, but he did it a lap too soon. Yeah. There's a lot of shoving and pushing and shoving out there, but it's fun. I mean, these cars, they got... Car. Pretty good car. <laughs> early on, you went by. Early on, you went by Dad here. He was you were drafted a while and decided you were going to go ahead and, and hang him out. Yeah, I was trying to stay behind him, but uh, you, you, you know you got four or five of them actually running in the back of you on the back straightaway. It's kind of hard not to. I mean, you want to spin him out or go on the inside of him. So I went ahead and went on the inside of him. I, I knew he'd work his way back up over no trouble. He always does. But I figured I, if I had a chance to win, I had to stay around the front. All right, Earnhardt Jr. and Sr. in victory lane as Dale Earnhardt Sr. gets his 11th IROC victory and 6th at Daytona. Bob? And our congratulations to Dale Earnhardt. Well, the Oval is tough and tricky at Phoenix International Raceway. Can Scott Goodyear repeat his champion, or will someone else take the checkered flag? The Northern Light Indy Racing League Sunday live at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, here on ABC. ABC's Jack Aroot provides all the happenings at the track on ABC Sports at ESPN.com, a part of Go Network. Dale Earnhardt wins here at Daytona, down to Jerry Punch. And here are the guys that were chasing him to the line, right on the edge of victory lane. Second finishing Tony Stewart and third finishing Jeff Burton. Uh, guys, I got to ask you, first of all, Jeff, you made that move on the white flag lap and your teammate Mark Martin went with you. Uh, did you think you had him cleared and would be able to hang out there? Well, I, di I didn't really want to make the move till later, but what happened was I looked in my mirror and Tony and somebody else, I'm not sure who it was, was catching Mark pretty quickly because they had gotten doubled up a couple laps before that. Well, they got cleared up and they were coming so fast, I was afraid if I didn't make the move right then, that Mark would have to go by me. So I knew I had Mark behind me. I made the move and because uh, I had so much momentum. And then we split, and the fast lane just happened to be the outside. But if I had to do it all over again, I'd have to do the same thing because I would have had to brake check everybody off at four, and they just would have, I would have ended up fifth. So I thought I did the right thing. And, Tony, you pulled up and pushed Earnhardt by and gave yourself a second-place finish. Yeah, we uh, we broke free, and Junior and I worked pretty good the whole race together. And, you know, we got a run on those three, and I knew that I knew where Junior was going to go. I knew he was going to go the outside. So it was either be the, the third guy in a three-car deal or the middle guy in a three-car deal. So uh, I took a chance on the outside, and it just seemed to work for us. Second and third here. Let me just grab Greg Ray quickly. Greg, impressive performance today. I know you got shuffled back at the end, but a great run. How'd you like it? It was a lot of fun, and uh, I mean, I really thought I was going to do a little bit better. I kind of got comfortable out there, and a couple of the guys started working with me. But uh, about 10 laps into it, the car was a little bit looser than I'd practiced. I only practiced with three cars, so I was getting used to that. And, and I asked to change the mirror so I could have a more convex mirror. And unfortunately, the mirror kept on falling down, and so I couldn't see the guys behind me. I didn't have a spotter, and I kept on adjusting the mirror. And I think all the guys would say, go, 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 and I was probably giving them bad signals. But, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. I, I knew I was going to go to school today. Uh, I just wanted to see the 330 bell without getting spanked too bad. So I, that's a victory finishing night. 
indeed impressive performance by Greg Ray in his first IROC race and what a show today Bob at Daytona and here are the unofficial results and remember they will start the next race in reverse order that means that Mark Dismore who finished last will be on the pole with Eddie Cheever alongside and those next three races will be at Talladega on April 16th on ABC, Michigan June 10th on ESPN, and at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on August the 5th, also on ABC. Dale Earnhardt wins over Tony Stewart, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. here at Daytona International Speedway.